Hello everyone! Welcome to the seventh video in my series, Studio Illustration with Adobe Illustrator. Today, we will be looking at exporting your file for print and screen. Feel free to follow along by downloading this demo's work file, link in the description box below. Stay to the very end for some bonus content where I talk about how to tile your pages to print oversized images from home. Alright, let's get started! Before we learn about exporting for screen and print, we should talk a little bit about color modes. In general, it's best to use RGB for all uses, including print. Nowadays, most printers can work with RGB PDFs. To make sure your document is in RGB, all we have to do is go to File, and set it to RGB Color. So let me explain the difference between RGB and CMYK. RGB is made out of subtractive light colors, so red, green, blue, light. And Together, when they're added together, you can create a wide spectrum of colors, also known as a gamut. CMYK is also known as printer colors, so it includes cyan, blue, magenta, a bit red, yellow, and black. And then these are additive colors, so when they come together, we can reproduce all the colors uh, that we see. Unfortunately, CMYK has a much smaller gamut, as we can see here. CMYK is here, RGB is here, and the visible spectrum is all around. So RGB has a larger gamut, as we can see here. CMYK has a smaller one. And depending on the type of materials that you print on, uh, that might even reduce your um, gamut as well. So as image makers, we want to have the widest variety of colors available to us. So it's always best to work in RGB. All right, so let's talk about artboards. In Illustrator, you can make multiple artboards. Uh, this ability is perfect for when you need to adapt your illustration across various media. For example, you may want to create a poster, this one's 11 by 17, and a 4 by 6 flyer uh, for an event. And then you might also need to create an Instagram post, so a square, or a Facebook and Twitter post as well. So this is a good way to just organize all your files and maintain consistency uh, by using artboards. To make an artboard is quite simple. All you have to do is choose the artboard tool in your toolbar, so just right here. And then you can just draw an artboard, however large you want, in your workspace. So just like that. And then you can just resize it up here uh, into a, say, 1920 by 1080 document. Just like that. And then you can also rename it. So you can say, um, this one we'll call demo file three. We can also make artboards from pre-existing artboards. So to do so, all we have to do is select our page tool right there, and then we can just alt drag it and bring everything over to this new space right here. So we can just grab that and then just drag it here. And this way, we'll just have everything in the same area as you can see here. Uh, and and all the images as well, so we can just replace it with text, keeping our, say, presentation slides consistent. If you don't want to um, drag everything along with it, then you can just turn this option off, this move copy artboard with, um, move with artboard, and then you can just move across, and then you'll get an artboard with the same dimension if you want to have a specific dimension. I want to keep everything on there, so again, I'll just select this on, and then I'll just hold Alt-Drag, and bring everything across. And then I'll just delete what I don't need. So I don't need this and I don't need the title as well. All right, so let's now try to resize this artboard. So to resize an artboard is also quite simple. All we have to do is click on our artboard tool right here and we can just drag it down to say where this dotted line ends, right there. And then you can see if we want it to be a square, you can just edit it. I'll just copy and paste the value over here. And then we'll have a perfect square just like that. So now this is a 1080 by 1080 pixel uh, square. And then just click off of it. And we, now we've made an artboard. All right, so let's reorder our artboard in our panel because the artboard we just made will be in the very at the very end of our artboard list. So right here, you can see that my artboard, uh, Demo2 Color Mode Copy, we want to rename that. So we'll call it Demo3 because it's my third demo board. So Demo3. And then we can also move it up 
and reorder it to be where number three is right here. So demo three. All right, so now when we zoom out, we now have an artboard here and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so on. All right, so let's start talking about exporting for print. So exporting for print in Adobe Illustrator is quite easy. All we want to do is we want to save our file as a copy, as a PDF, with the preset, with the preset high, quality, high quality print. So to do that, quite simple, we'll just go to our file menu and then we'll hit save a copy. So this one, save or save as, it won't override your file. So we'll just hit save a copy. And then we will turn this into Adobe PDF. And then to our file name, we'll, we'll add print. So we know what this file is all about. And then here you can even specify which artboards that you want to export. So in this case, maybe we just want to export one of the uh, artboards. So uh, right now, we, I think we have number five will be this po uh, this file, right, this artboard right here that I put in into there. And then we can just hit save. Now another dialog box will pop up and then we will have um, different presets. And my favorite presets for printing is obviously high quality print. And then here you have some other options we'll get into right after this. And then, but if you don't have any bleeds and you're happy with the way it looks, then you can just hit save PDF and it'll save this for you. So now you can see in our finder window that we have our demo print file saved to our folder. And then we can also just click in here and open up the PDF and you can see that it has exported our file into a print ready PDF. So we have an image and that reaches to the edges of our artboard. We might want to actually extend our, our edges of their document to go outside of the artboard. That way, when we send it to print, we can add bleeds to it. And then the printer can take that, print it off, and then they can cut off the overhang so we can have nice even edges uh, where the print goes all the way to the, all, all the way to the ends. So the best way to do this, I find, is to just extend the background colors uh, or part of the image to go outside this boundary. So as you can see here, I have made a artboard right, inside, right on top of another artboard. So it's just called number five, demo 4.1. And then I just want to move this image right here. I want to move the sides to go outside the artboard. So in this one, I have a little bit of a clipping mask, so it's quite easy for me. I will just use my direct select tool and I'll just select on the edges of my clipping mask and I'll move those up. So I'm just gonna hit up like there and you can see this black area doesn't go quite up. So um, I'm just going to move it up slightly and then just have it look like the, the bleed. Sometimes you have to edit it afterwards because even I often forget to add a bleed. So you just have to adjust slightly. And then we'll do the same to the sides. So again, we'll just uh, use our direct select tool, click on the side, and I'm just gonna hold shift and uh, move my uh, edges across by holding shift and then clicking the right arrow key. Uh, we can do the same with the bottom. Uh, this time I will just select the, the edge of the clipping mask right here and I'm gonna hold shift and I'm just gonna click and drag it all the way down. So just like that. All right, so now we have a little bit of a bleed start to uh, be set up. We have the image go outside the document, uh, the artboard boundaries. So now to add a bleed, into our print PDF, we will have to, again, we'll have to go save as a copy. And then we'll just go set this one to uh, PDF again. And then it uses our same one, so number five right here. Uh, I'll, I'll override my old copy, or maybe I'll add another one that says bleeds on it. And I'll hit save. And then now you can click down on marks and bleeds right here, and then we don't need all trim uh, printer's marks, we just need trim marks. And in general, uh, we wanna add a 1 8 inch bleed, so 0.125 inch. So we can just type that in like that, and it'll just automatically update all around if this is right here. Another thing that we might wanna do is we might want to output uh, our color profiles. In my experience, the best color results when you set the output to include all profiles. So just to do that, we'll just hit on output right here. And then we can go no conversion. So we'll keep that as, as that. And then we'll go include all profiles. And then now if you want to, you can even save this preset just by clicking the corner here. And you can just call it high quality print. 
width bleeds and all profiles included. So and then hit OK and then you can just use this uh, you can use this whenever you want now uh, and it'll just come as a preset. So we'll just hit save PDF and it'll have saved it for you with bleeds. So let's go to a finder window and then we have it here and then we'll just open in PDF to take a look. So you can see now that the corners have a little bit of a tiny bleed and overhang. So these are the crop marks and then so if the printer prints this out they will print off this on a larger sheet of paper and they'll cut this off so that all your images will reach beautifully from Side to, from the sides of your paper. So we'll just zoom out and you can just see that little bit of overhang right there. So that looks great. So now let's talk about exporting our image for screens. When we export our images on screen, what we really want to do is we want to balance the size of the file uh, to the quality of the image. So in general, uh, JPEGs are smaller in size than PNGs. Um, JPGs are good for photography and images with many details and colors. However, details are often lost with compression. Uh, so you can kind of see something like that right here. PNGs are really good for images such as logos, um, text or graphics with flat color, and they also support transparency. We can see here I have placed in a JPEG and you can see that there's no transparency there. Whereas with a PNG, there is transparency. So if I move this, you can see that um, the transparency of the image right there. So generally, we want to avoid GIFs because they're a little bit outdated unless you want to make an animated GIF, uh, which you can't do in Illustrator, but you can do in Photoshop. So remember that a lot of uh, different services, so like Instagram or uh, Twitter, or Facebook, any or even on uh, website tools, they have their own compression tools. So I recommend just uploading uh, your best quality image. So maybe a, a JPG at 100 at maximum quality or a PNG at maximum quality, and then let the website use their own compression tools so you can maintain the best quality of your image. If you want to read a little bit more about the differences in file types, JPGs and PNGs, you can look at the links that I provide below in the description box. In general, JPGs lose data every time you resave it and the image quality starts to deteriorate, whereas PNGs do not lose quality uh, the, more, uh, the more times you resave them. So PNGs are good if you want to maintain quality, such as with a logo or uh, really fine, sharp graphic images, uh, such as if your graphic has text. Um, but again, JPGs are usually smaller, which is really important for uploading images to websites where and not assuming everyone has high speed internet uh, internet and P, but pngs have better quality but are a bit larger so it's really about finding the balance and finding the the appropriate use for others so again JB, jpegs are good for photography and pngs are good for graphics all right so now let's just talk about exporting for screens so this is super simple all we have to do is we have to just go to file and export for screens So the dialog box will pop up and then we can choose whichever screens that we want to export. Uh, in this case, I want to just export, uh, say, our artboards at the very end. So, uh, or maybe we just want to export the two Instagram and the Facebook posts, because again, these are just for screen. And then here you can choose um, where you want it to be saved. So you can just click here and then you can just uh, choose the appropriate folder. And then you can also uh, choose what kind of format you want. So again, uh, since we're dealing with graphic images, uh, PNG is our best bet. So we'll just click the first PNG right there. And if you want to, you can even increase the scale, but I would just keep it as is because they're set properly already. So you can also create uh, a prefix. So it'll, the front of every file will have uh, this uh, title right here. And then you can also, and then it'll end with the artboard's name. So it'll be SM Dig Illustration, Instagram, or Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, just like that. And that helps organize your files. So then you just, when you've selected everything you want, just hit export artboard and it'll just expect a, uh, export just like that, as you see here. So just again, uh, to clarify, 
Um, your prefix will go right here. So uh, SM Digital Illustration will go right here. And then your artboard name, so right here, will be put at the end of the file. So that's quite simple uh, if you want to export your images for screen. Another way to save for web, uh, if you want to control the details a bit more, is that you can use a save for web uh, legacy version. So to do this one, you first have to select the artboard that you want to export. So I'll just zoom out and I'll just choose my Instagram file right here. So I'll just double click on this artboard right here, uh, as this is the one I want to export. And I'll just go to file, export, save for web right here. And then this will give you a few more options. And if you want to, you can also save as a JPEG if you like. So I'll just uh, make this a little bit smaller so they can see the whole thing. And then we can now change it to many different ones. So we have the option of GIF in this one. So we'll just hit GIF. And in this one, you can say you can see the size of our file. So this is 37K, very small. But since it's only black and white, you might even want to reduce it to four. And then you can see that it reduces the file size even further. Uh, but then you'll start to get, um, your edges will start to get a little bit jagged. Um, so if you see two, you'll even see it more pronounced, that jagged edge. So you do need a few grays to sort of soften the edges. So here, we, this looks really great, and it's only 32K. And you can really see that it's really optimized for web because it's small, and there's, no, there's very little loss of quality. Um, you can also see the difference between PNG 8 and 24. So this is just the amount of colors. PNG 8 has less and PNG 24 has more. And then you can kind of see the difference. So a PNG uh, will have 89 uh, kilobytes. But again, you don't lose um, the quality. And then you can see with JPEG right here is that it's uh, almost triple the size, so 221 kilobytes. And if we even zoom in, uh, this looks really great. But if we take it down to low, you'll start to see all these artifacts, so these little gray bits everywhere, uh, which show how JPEGs make your image uh, lose quality when you save them, compress them down. So um, I'm not gonna save this, so I'm just gonna hit cancel, but if you want to, you can just save it and it'll just uh, give you a dialog box to save it to wherever. All right, so let's look at the bonus content where I talk about how to tile your pages so you can print a larger image over smaller pieces of paper. So if you have a larger image like this one that is 28 by 38 inches, you might want to print at home just to see how it looks like on standard letter size pieces of paper. So to do so, all you have to do is you have to just go to um, print and we'll just set up our uh, pieces of paper right here. Um, so this only works for works if you are you just using one artboard, which is why this is in the bonus content. So we're just gonna go down to here and we're just gonna hit uh, tile full pages or tile imageable areas. So tile full pages will include the margins of the pages, whereas tile imageable areas will uh, make sure that you can print uh, from edge to edge in all the images so there won't be any gaps. So we'll go tile, I will turn, I'll show you tile full pages first. And then now we will choose our page size. So we we'll, can choose letter just like that. And then um, you can see that it will take you about 16 pages uh, and then you can change it. You can change the orientation of your page as well. So we'll just hit, uh, we'll try it with portrait first and then we'll, instead of hitting print, we'll hit done. So now we have to just go into view and we'll just show print tiling and then you can kind of see where all our pages are. And then with our page tool, hand, uh, print tiling tool. So that's actually right underneath your hand tool right here. So you just click and drag, open that up. And you can actually drag uh, the pages and then just resize them to wherever you want them. So just like this. So you can see with tile imageable areas that you'll see a little bit of a, there'll be a gap between all the pages, um, but it, but within those gaps, we'll assume that there are images. So you can just put them all together without cropping. Uh, they'll have gaps on it, mm. but then you'll get an over, uh, overview of the image. Uh, and then yes, you can just use your tile tool right here to just tile it so that you can see how many pages to print. So uh, 16 pages here, just like that. Um, and then you can just move around to just reformat it wherever you want. So uh, 16 pages is about the smallest we can get. Um, and you can decide there. Um, and then 
Uh, if you want to as well, you can uh, change it to tell all the image wall areas. So we'll just click here and then image wall area areas. And then if you want to, you can even change the size of paper. So if you were to send this to print, you could, um, you could use a larger format piece of paper. So a little larger format piece of paper. So 11 by 17 and you hit done right there. And then you can also move this around and then you can see that it will print uh, about 21, um, nine pages here, uh, just like that. So yeah. And then you can see if you print these off, you will have to crop off the margins. Um, but then when you tile them together, there will be no gaps between all the images. All right. I hope you found that helpful and I will see you in my next vlog. So thanks for watching.